Somebody put your hands together for Jesus wherever you are. Our God is King. He's Lord. There's none beside Him. Jesus will lift your name higher. Above every other name this morning. Because you deserve our worship. Because you deserve our praise. And for this reason, we've come to dedicate our love. We've come to give back the love you've given us. We've come to say you alone deserve it all. Come on, somebody wave your hands wherever you are. Jesus be praised. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. No one like you, Jesus. <laughs> oh. I know you will never disappoint. I know, Lord, you always got my back. I know all things are working for my good. Jesus, choose you will never be so good. In times like this, oh God, you are always on time. We know, we know, we know all things are working for our good. We know you are perfect in all of your ways. I will never stop giving you all the praise, Lord. Without you, there's no me, there's no me without 
and we are glad. We thank you for the many good news we are receiving, oh God. We thank you for the flattening of the curve. We thank you for the miracles of healing, the testimonies of healing and deliverances. To you be the glory, oh God. To you be the honor. We thank you for preserving the lives of our loved ones, the lives of those at the front lines. 
We give you praise, oh God. We thank you. Lord, we thank you for giving our government wisdom. We thank you for the easing of the lockdown. We thank you for people are getting back their lives. We thank you. To you be the glory, to you be the honor. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. It's my pleasure to be with you again this week. I believe that God has done mighty things for us this past one week. I believe that many of us are getting back our lives gradually. Thank God for the lockdown is easing across the world. We are grateful. We are grateful to God. And uh, we thank God that our loved ones are the front lines, medical professionals. They are safe and well. To God be the glory. We, we can't thank him enough. Last week, I spoke that God has given you peace, that the death of Jesus is the advent of peace for humanity, that we are no longer having differences and quarrel and disagreement with God, that the middle world of enmity between us and God has been removed. Today, I'm going to speak on the confounding of the religious order. The confounding of the religious order. This is very interesting to me because for many years now, I have tried to explain to some of my friends that, that the death of Jesus is the end of world religion. It's the dismantling of the religious order. And many of them have refused to accept with me some of them still believe that, oh, you must uh, pray five times a day to be accepted by the Almighty. For some of them, they believe that unless you go to worship on a Saturday, you are doing it the wrong way. Unless you worship on a Sunday, you are not in line with the will of God. But here we are today as a result of the lockdown. Those who believe that Saturday is the day of worship, those who believe that Sunday is the day of worship, and you must go to a temple, a lot of them are being confounded today, which means that our religious anchors are being confounded. And I'm grateful to God because it is making many people to think that, ah, what would be now the state of them since they are not able to meet their religious obligations? So, the religion of the world have been confounded. And that is what Jesus wanted all the while. Jesus came, one of the gifts, core gift outcome of the coming of Jesus, his death and his resurrection, was the dismantling and desecration of the religious orders. Hallelujah. His gift to humanity was the ending of all religion. All religion. All religion. He has ended all religion. He has ended the mandate of the religious custodians of the things that we must do to be accepted by God. He has ended it. Unfortunately, many of us have not realized it. So we are still struggling to please God and be accepted by him. Praise God. Judaism of the pre -BC, the BC era of Judaism, that's before Jesus, was a representation of the entire gamut of global religion. Yes, many times when we speak that Jesus has ended religion, a lot of people are ascribing it to Judaistic orders. Judaism was just a representation of global religion. Honestly, that's my thought, that Judaism was just a representation of global religion. Be it Hinduism, Buddhism, Confucianism, Arianism, Islamism, name it. Judaism was just a representation. Praise God. And Jesus came particular, with particular reference to Judaism as a symbol of global religion, and he dismantled it. Praise God. The only marked difference between Judaism and others was the belief in the existence of only one supreme almighty God. Praise God. That's monotheistic beliefs. We know that that's one of the gifts Judaism gave to the world. Monotheism. They believe that God is one. Hallelujah. That was their gift to the world. We know that there are other religions who are polytheistic in their, in their form, who believe in the existence of several gods. But even in the midst of that belief, they also believe that there is one king of gods, one almighty, that the several other gods are sub-gods to this almighty. That means that all humanity believe in the existence of the almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, the father of humanity. That is the Almighty God. 
So Judaism in the days of Christ was a representation of the body of religion. It's not just, oh, Judaism, Islamism, Christianity. No, 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 no. Judaism was just a representation. And Jesus came to destroy, desecrate, annihilate the religious order, the order of rules and regulations that are placed by men who claim to have the sole right to God, that if you must access God, you must follow these rules. That is what religion is about. And Jesus came to destroy it. Other than that, and the unknown usage of graven effigies, another gift that Judaism gave humanity is their abhorrence of the use of graven images and effigies to access God. In Judaism, every form of imagery, physical things made by hands that deity is ascribed on, is considered idolatry, so they don't accept it. Why many other religions, you have the forms of, of things made with hands and human element, a natural element ascribed with deity. Judaism does not accept that. But outside of that, Judaism is not so different from other religions. Hallelujah. It's not so different from other religions. They did every other thing that other religions do. They observe rules and regulations. They observe ordinances, ceremonies, and rituals that every other religion do. If you go and study other religions critically, you will find many parallels in terms of sacrificial worship, in terms of rules of ordinances, in terms of uh, the maintenance of shrines and holy places and temples. Other religions do the same. So Judaism, outside of their belief in one God and the non-usage of graven effigies, is not so different. So Judaism represents the gamut of global religion, the body of religion. That's what Judaism represented. Now, the load of ritual observations, ordinances, and ceremonies, etc., present in the ancient Judaism can also be found in most other religions of the world and traditions including African tradition. Praise God. If you go and look at ancient Judaism, you know, what we have today is rabbinical Judaism. Ancient Judaism ended with the war of AD 70 when Jerusalem, as it was, was destroyed. At, the, as at that time, Jude Christianity was seen as just a sect in ancient Judaism. But with understanding after the war, there was a complete separation between Christianity and ancient Judaism. So if you look at the ancient Judaistic practice, for some traditional Jews who want to still practice it, you will see, just like my, some of our extended families, for those of us who are from Benin, who still practice idolatry and animism, will take a chicken and round your head and spill the blood and make an uh, oblation to the gods for atonement. Ancient Judaism practiced the same thing. So Judaism was a representation of all global religion in the eyes of, of God, in the eyes of humanity. Religion is the organized order of worship given to God inherently in a quest to gain appeasement, atonement, acceptance, and spiritual enlightenment. That's an order created by man set as a rule in accessing God inherently in the heart of all who practice religion is a need for appeasement from our sins, a need for atonement, a need to access forgiveness from the Almighty God. So our ancient fathers came together and established rules and regulation and put things in order. If you want God to hear your prayers, you have to fast for seven days. You have to fast for three days. If you have sinned, you have to make sacrifice of, of lamb, of sheep, of cattle, depending on the magnitude of your sin. You have to do this. You have to do that. A body of ordinances across the world were born. And like I said before, because of our deep sense of guilt, because of our deep sense of sin and condemnation, when God drove man out of the garden where he could reach out all his needs were met, when he was driven out, the sense of guilt came and, and condemnation. So what did men do? When there is lightning, they think that, oh, lightning is a manifestation of the wrath of God 
Almighty, so they will appease the God of lightning. When there is tempest in the ocean, oh, it's a manifestation of the God, of God because of our sin. So they will make sacrifices to appease the God of the sea. In that manner, when there are great fire everywhere, they will make sacrifices to appease Molech, the God of fire. In that manner, men began to establish orders and rules and rituals for the attainment of appeasement, atonement, and forgiveness of sin. And that's how the religious order became born. Hallelujah. So religion usually involves devotion and ritual observance. When you breach the ordinances of any religious order, as an adherent, you feel a deep sense of guilt and condemnation and the urgency and need for forgiveness. From the etymology of the root word, religare, from which the word religion was derived, it means to bind fast, to place an obligation or bond between humans and God. If you study the body of religion across the world, you will realize that there is actually a binding, an obligation, an enslavement, a subjugation of the human spirit. We can't do the things we are supposed to do because we fear that perhaps if I do this, God will be angry. Someone once said in 1976, when, men placed man, when, when the United States placed man in the moon and there was celebration across the world, a religious person went to meet, a Christian, went to meet him and said, look, if God wanted men in the moon, he would have placed them there himself. So by reason of religion, the human spirit and the human soul was subjugated. We can't be all we should be. There was a body to try and appease God. A body in us to try and gain forgiveness. A body in us to appease for our sin, to atone for our wickedness. That's what religion did to us. You can't look up too long because that is the domain of God. If you look up for too long, you may offend God. You can't even fall in love with a beautiful lady as a young single man because you have to be careful not to offend God. You can't be too carried away by the beauty of the world because when you do that, you may risk offending God. You can't be too rich because when you are rich, you may risk offending God. Religion placed such burden on the human soul, on humanity, and we became enslaved. We became enslaved. And God said, as much as we have tried with all the ceremonial observance to attain forgiveness, to atone for our sins, he says, look, all those efforts, the righteousness it can give is nothing but that of a filthy rag. Religion made us slaves. Truly, the other religion actually places unattainable obligations on the human race. Unattainable, no matter how hard we try. Thereby subjecting us and all adherents to a life of permanent guilt and condemnation. Guilt and condemnation, on the other hand, placing us in a permanent condition of always needing atonement and appeasement from an angry God. So that was the picture that religion gave us, that God was angry. Man is useless. Humanity is wicked. And the, the product or the subject of the wrath of divinity. So in a bid to appease that, we gave ourselves as willing slaves to religion. Hallelujah. I write the history of the great Benin kingdom. And we were told that after the early missionaries, the Europeans, established a church in Benin, Arosa Temple, that after some years when the, the, the missionaries left, they tried, the ancient Benin people converted the church to a place where idols was being worshipped. And when the missionaries returned after some years, they asked the Beninese, why did you convert the church to a place of idol worship? The Beninese said that the God you introduced to us they are too good and too gentle. That Esu that we are worshiping now is wicked. So if we don't serve him and do those sacrifices, he will punish us. He is an unforgiving being. Unfortunately, fortunately for the Beninese, 
They knew that Esau is unforgiving, but that God is loving and forgiving. But unfortunately for our world today, a lot of us, as a result of our alignment with tradition and religion, a lot of us believe that God Almighty is unforgiving. So we must appease. We must atone in order to gain his forgiveness. Therefore, making him become, putting him at par with the Esau that the Benes spoke about. Hallelujah. Praise God. Religion thrives in fear. The custodians of the religions of the world, they perpetrate fear in us. And that fear enslaves us. It binds us and makes us helpless. It makes us have the feeling of permanently needing to appease God. Do you know how life would have been if there was no fear of God? If there was no fear of God, praise God. If there was no fear that God will punish me if, if I dare quest for greatness. If there was no fear, religion would have failed. Praise God. So I see a lot of people talking today, talking about how dangerous the seasons are, that the world is coming to an end, and people are afraid. Praise God. And you know, when you, when you, when you propagate such fear, you, the custodian of those religions, you remain relevant. Religion is a terrible thing. And Jesus came to end it. Jesus came. That is the subject of my message today. Jesus came to end religion in whatever form it presents itself. Any practice that subjugates the human spirit, Jesus came to unleash us. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are subjected to fear so we can accept the solutions preferred by the religious overlords and custodians. When Jesus came, he declared, Come unto me, all ye who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All who labor and all who are heavy laden. The two phrases there are not for people doing manual labor. They are not for laborers in the marketplace. They are not for construction laborers in the building sites. Those are not the people that Jesus was talking about here. He said, I will give you rest all who are labor, all those that have become laden with the obligation of religion, all those that are weighed down with the need for atonement, all those that have struggled and struggled and struggled to attain acceptance from God and it's not working. He came and declared, come to me, come to me, come to me. I will give you rest from that body. What a glorious good news. What a glorious good news. What a glorious good news Jesus brought to humanity because we were enslaved. Hallelujah. Praise God. So those are the people, people who were pressed by religious mandates. People who were enslaved by the obligations of religion. Jesus said, I will give you rest. Rest here is not the absence of work in the literal sense, but rest which really means freedom from obligation. How many of you have ever had a debt that was so heavy on you? You are owing someone and you know how it feels. When there is no way, no means to pay, you are afraid. When you see a call, and it is the person that you are owing. You run away. You, 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 are, you avoid the call. If you are going somewhere and you sight the person, if you think that the person has not seen you, you run away. That is enslavement. That's why the Bible says that a borrower is a, a slave to the lender. That is the freedom that Jesus came and made us free from. He set us free from the debt and obligation of religion. Freedom from the fear of God. Freedom from the need for appeasement. The need for atonement. And the need for forgiveness. Jesus came. Come to me. If you are such that has struggled for appeasement, to appease the gods, you have struggled to atone for your sins, Jesus came to end the world religious order. 
that Jerusalem and Judaism represented in the pre AD era. Praise God. Jesus has given us rest. Jesus has given us rest. Hebrews 4, 1 to 10. Jesus has given us rest. Praise God. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, let's read it. Hebrews 4. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should come short of that promise. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them because they did not believe it. It was not mixed in them with faith that heard it. For we, are, we which have believed do enter into rest. If you have believed Jesus, you have entered into rest from your obligations. You have entered into rest from the need for appeasement. You have entered into rest from the need for atonement. Your sins are forgiven. You have no role to play in the forgiveness of your sin. That which we have believed, they which have believed, we have entered into rest, as he said. As I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, though the works were finished from the foundations of the world. Hallelujah. From verse 4. Praise God. Are you here today? For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. He is saying that the rest he's talking about, he typifies it in a way like the Sabbath. That after work of creation, on the seventh day, God rests. So we have entered into the Sabbath of the Lord. We have entered into the rest from all our obligations from religion. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, praise God. So God has given us rest. Jesus has given us rest. Unfortunately, the larger population of the world rejected the offer of rest from Jesus. They rejected it. That's why you see religion are still growing today. In all forms. They renege in fear and the thought that we are all impure souls needing atonement. Oh, wretched souls that we are. Oh, sinful humans that we are needing atonement. Whereas Jesus has purchased our atonement. Jesus has appeased finally once and for all. He says, come to me and I will give you rest. If we don't atone, that's the way to think. We get doomed and condemned by God. Religion is the reason why many people are afraid because of a pandemic that the world is coming to an end. A lot of people are adjusting. Oh, we need to adjust ourselves because God is going to destroy the world. The world is coming to an end. The world is coming to an end. So prepare yourself. Some people are selling their assets. Oh, the world is coming to an end. Prepare yourself. That's what religion does to us. Praise God. Jesus ended it. Jesus condemned religion. Jesus desecrated the order of religion. Praise God. The sequence of religious order is as follows. The first is a deity. A symbol of worship and extreme veneration. A god. Every religion believes that they are worshiping a god. Praise God. Judaistic people, the Jews, believe they are worshiping the God, an almighty. The, the Hindus and the Buddhists believe they are worshiping the almighty. The Muslims are worshiping the almighty. But guess what? Jesus did not introduce God to us as God, as a subject of worship and deep veneration. Jesus introduced God to us as our father in heaven. So you, you will look at scriptures and see that most times when Jesus is referring to God, he referred to him as our father in heaven. The only time Jesus referred to, to God as God was when he was nailed by religion. When he carried the ultimate obligation of religion upon his head, his father in heaven became God to him. And he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That was the only time you hear Jesus refer to his father in heaven as God. So he never introduced to us as God. But guess what? That's the whole world of argument about which is the real God. Praise God. That's what religion does. Jesus came and ended it. Jesus didn't present to us any being that should be venerated. Any being that should be, should be approached with deep devotion. 
children came to Jesus and they were playing around him. And the protocol said, no, 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 no. no. You can't come and mess up the master. You can't, you can't be jumping on the body of the master like that. And Jesus said, no, 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 stop that. That suffer these little children to come to me. For of these types are the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. What do children do? Children do not fear. They do not have fear in their hearts. They learn it over time. So children do not respect protocol. Children can, if, I, if my child is still very young, I can be in a garden where the president is with all protocol. If that child sees me sitting next to the president, he can disregard all the security presence and run to me and jump on my body because I'm his father. They, rest, they don't respect protocol. So Jesus was saying that the kingdom is of such people who have lost their fear of a divine deity, who have subjected themselves to the observance of protocol by way of ordinances and sacrifices to appease God. That of this kind of children is the kingdom. Of this is the kingdom. So the religious order presents us a God that must be feared. A dangerous, mighty God. A God of war. A mighty, terrible God. The warrior is his name. By the breath of his nostrils, the earth congeal, the, 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 the sea congeal like a stone. The earth quakes, the mountains and the little hills begin to skip like rams and little lambs. That is the kind of God that religion presents us. But Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom. So religious present us a God that must be feared. And Jesus only referred to God when he was nailed by religion. When the ultimate obligation of religion was upon his head. He says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In Matthew 6, 9, he says, when you pray, say, our Father. All the introduction of God to us by Jesus, he always said, our Father, our Father, our Father, our Father, our Father, our Father in heaven. So God is not a God, a deity with, that deserves, that demands extreme veneration, as religion has told us. God is a Father that loves you, a Father that wants you to jump on his body like a little child would. Hallelujah. Now imagine this world of religion. Do you know that every religion in the world claims that they serve a different God? If I see a Muslim brother today, I will tell the Muslim that, oh, Allah is not the same thing as Jehovah. Right? That's what religion does. Allah is not the same thing as Jehovah. I will tell the Confucian. I will tell the Buddhist. I will tell the Hindu that their God is not the same as mine. Religion divides. You know, a lot of people have asked me in recent times, they've shown me conferences of the world order of religion where they try to sign a peace treaty. I say, you see, you see, you see, you see, it's a sign of the end time. Religion are uniting. Guess what? Jesus desecrated, destroyed, annihilated, abrogated the whole order of religion. And do you know what I asked my friend? I said, let me tell you how deceitful religion is. I said, do you know that Religion across the world, all religion, agree on the devil. When Muslims go to Mecca and throw stone at Satan, and Christians call Satan devil, and the, the Benin people call him Esu. I don't know what other tribes of the world call him, but all religion of the world unite to say that he's the same devil. You know, if a Muslim calls devil, he's the same devil, Right? Devil is devil, right? Why then do we think the devil is more one in the world than God? That's what religion does. Devil is devil, but God, no, 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 no. Your God is different from mine. My God is different from yours. And we are killing ourselves on the basis of these differences. But we agree that the devil is one. And yet when God, Jesus was asked that which is the greatest commandment in the Bible, what did Jesus say? Mark 12, 29. Mark 12, 29. Praise God. He said, which is the biggest? The biggest. He says, yeah, this. The first commandment of all, the first of all the commandment, the most important is the Lord our God is one. The Lord our God is one. That means the God that created the heavens and the earth is one. The Lord our God is one. Yeah, ye, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Deuteronomy 6, 4. 
Yeah, you all Israel. The God that you are calling is one God is not divided. Why then has religion made us believe that the devil is one devil, but God is not? The God that I serve is different from the God. Let me tell you, religion has so divided us that the enemies will say they serve God through Oloku, a sub devil. They serve God through this, they serve God. But I tell you, if you are human, there is only one creator. Osanobua, that's his name. Only one creator. Only one God. And God said that he was not saying this to the Jewish religion. He was saying this to humanity. Yeah, oh Israel, the Lord God is one. The Lord God is one. So religion presents this God to us. This mighty, terrible God. This angry God that we must venerate and we must tremble at his presence. We must quake when he appears. When we are going into his presence, we must, we must first cleanse ourselves and make sure that we are clean. Otherwise, we become victim of his wrath and destruction. So that's the first symbol that religion presents, a symbol of a deity. The second script symbol is a holy scripture and book of ordinances and laws. Praise God. Religious bodies, holy scriptures, book of ordinances. Christianity as we know it. Jesus did not come from heaven and said he brought a book of instructions, giving it to us that this is how we should be Christians. Jesus did not hand a book to anybody. Jesus came from heaven. Jesus had a one-on-one -on -one interaction. When Pilate asked him, he told Pilate, he said, look, I can command a host of heaven now, and they will take over this palace. Whatever power you have is the power given to you by my Father in heaven. So if I want deliverance from your hand, I know how to command by just one instruction. The host of heaven will appear here. The mighty host of heaven. That means Jesus was in permanent communication with the host of heaven. He said, my father walketh, hitherto I walk. That means Jesus was. But guess what? Jesus did not say at any time, give us a book of instruction. A book of ordinances, a book of laws that we must follow to become Christian. You see how Jesus dismantled religion. But guess what? Every religion in the world have their own ordinances. They have their own books. Some say that they were praying in Mount Sinai and an angel gave them the book. You can see how some of this religion venerates the book. If you dare, there was a young man recently that spoke some negative things about he says he's a, he was a Muslim, but he's not an atheist, and he was arrested. People get killed for them for being found with a piece of the Quran. So the book was given by an angel, given by an angel for the enslavement of humanity. Hallelujah. Jesus came, and he gave us no book. He gave us no book. He did not claim to bring any book from heaven that we must venerate. That we must hallow like the Muslims rule the Quran. What we have today is a book of documents, historical and instructional letters compiled by early church fathers to guide us because they were confused. Ah, we are born again, we have accepted Jesus. So, why, how do we now be Christians? All Jesus wanted is accept his love, deny yourself, that's extract from yourself the obligation of religion. And just be happy with the newfound love of the Father you have. But because they were coming from a Judaistic background, it became a confusion that, ah, okay, there was a time there was an argument that, that led to the first Jerusalem council. An argument with the Jews where some say you must become a Jew, some say you must become a, a, a Greek. You know, there was confusion. This Christianity said, how do we practice it? And they had to meet the elders in Jerusalem who were also wondering, how do we practice it? So the elders now said, okay, uh, well, what we can just do, they gave them excerpt of the Judaistic religion. I said, okay, avoid blood, avoid this, avoid fornication, avoid adultery, uh, avoid things sacrificed to idols, and that's all. Because Jesus never gave us a set of rules that we must follow as a way to be a Christian. He never did. Hallelujah. So ever wondered why Jesus didn't present any book? Instead, he claimed to fulfill the scriptures, the holy book that represents religious order. Praise God. 
as was given to Moses and abolished the ordinances. In Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Hallelujah. He says, think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophet. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Verse 18, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one judge or one title shall in no wise pass from the law till all is fulfilled. You know, this is a scriptural verse that is so grossly misunderstood. Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy, but I came to fulfill. And not one judge will pass until it is fulfilled. What Jesus was saying is this, once a judge is fulfilled, it will pass. Once a judge is fulfilled, it is passed. And he declared in the previous verse 17 that I came to fulfill. If the ordinances have been fulfilled, if the laws as given by Moses are fulfilled in Christ Jesus, that means that they have passed. That is the only condition for them passing. And Jesus said he came to fulfill. And as he has fulfilled, they have passed. Hebrews 10, 1 to 6. Hebrews 10, 1 to 6. Hallelujah. Praise God. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. And when I'm talking about the law here, I'm not talking about the law of Judaism. I'm talking about the law across all religions of the world. They have a shadow of good things to come. Not the image of the very things. The law of my own local ex uh, families in Uronibe. The laws of my Confucian friends in China. All those laws and ordinances, they have a shadow of good things to come. But they are not the image of the things. And they can never, with those sacrifices, which they offered year by year continually, make the come as they run to perfect. Hallelujah. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Because that the worshippers are purged. Once purged, should have had no more conscience of sin. Hallelujah. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again of sin every year. Oh, praise God. For it is not possible that the bloods of bulls and goats should take away sins. It is not possible that the sacrifices we make for our atonement and appeasement to take away sin across all religion. Hallelujah. Wherefore, when he came, he said, Sacrifice and offering, thou will not. You do not desire it. It's, you are not interested, but the body you prepared me. A body that is the typification of all the ordinances and, uh, and sacrifices. That's what you have prepared me. It says in bond sacrifices and in offerings for sin, you have no pleasure in them. Hallelujah. Then said I come in the volume as it is written in the book to do your will. Praise God. Praise God. So Jesus abolished the ordinances. He fulfilled them in his body. His body was a typification, a summation of all ordinances. So Jesus came. And abolish religion. He abolished religion. The collections of dogmas and religious rules, ceremonies and obligations. He abolished across all religions. Across all religions. Holy books and what they represent. Rules for the repression and subjugation of the human soul. Jesus has abolished. Jesus has abolished. He said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Jesus has paid for your rest. Jesus has paid for your rest. Another thing Jesus did, a shrine, another symbol of religion, is a shrine, a holy site, holy days, holy cities, pilgrimages. In John 4, 21. In John 4, 21. Then said, John 4, 21. Hallelujah. Jesus said unto her, believe me, the hour is coming. When ye shall neither in this mountain, nor yet in Jerusalem, worship the Father. The hour is coming when you shall not need a temple. The hour is coming when you shall not need a holy place. The hour is coming when you shall not need a shrine. The hour is coming. And now is. Verse 22. Hallelujah. Ye worship what you don't know. You worship what you don't know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews, so the Father said. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshiper shall not worship the Father, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For those are the kind of people that the Father is seeking. Not people that we go to a place in the, in the Middle East, 
a place in Jerusalem, a place in Mecca, a place in, in, in India, anywhere in the world, a place in Uronibe, anywhere in the world to worship God. For Jesus abolished religion. Jesus desecrated all the symbolisms of religion for the freedom of the human soul. Hallelujah. He says sacrifices and rituals for atonement, ceremonies, that's another symbolism of religion. He abolished it. In Jeremiah 7 verse 21, Jeremiah 7 verse 21, the prophet was speaking and he said, he said, thus said the Lord of hosts, of the God of Israel, put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and eat flesh. He says, for I speak not, I'm not the one that told your fathers, nor command them in the day that I brought them out of the, of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings and sacrifice. Praise God. Praise God. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. Obey my voice, I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk ye in the ways that I have commanded you. And what ways have I commanded you? Hallelujah. Praise God. What ways have I commanded you? Let's go back to Mark 12, verse 29. Mark 12, verse 29. He said, the first of all the commandments is this. Yeah, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, verse 30. And thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Then the second commandment. And the second commandment is like namely this. Thou shalt, thou, it's like the first. The second commandment is like the first. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God as thyself. There is no other commandment greater than this. That is the new religion. That is the only religion Jesus introduced us to. And it's not a religion. Praise God. He says, love God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your might. Then the second one is equivalent of the first one, which is love your neighbor as yourself. Now how do you love God with all your heart? How do you love God with all your might? You love God with all your heart by showing love to your neighbor. By showing love to your brother, by showing love to your community, by showing love to humans created by God. He says the first commandment is love God with all your hearts. The Lord God is one. Love him with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. The second commandment is the same as the first, which is love your neighbor as yourself. That is the commandment. And that commandment need no book of ordinance. That commandment needs no religious observance. That commandment is more important than the number of times you go to church. That commandment is more important than the number of sacrifices you make. That commandment is more important than the atonement and all rights of religion that you observe. Jesus came and abolished religion. He destroyed religion. Hebrews 8.13. Hebrews 8.13. Hallelujah. He says, in that he said a new commandment, a new covenant, he has made the first old. Now that which old, decayed, and waxed old is ready to vanish away. He has abolished the old religion, represented as Judaism, and all forms of world religion. So Jesus did not come to introduce us to a new religion. So I will say now, like Jesus said, is there anyone there who is listening to me, who is burdened by the obligations of religion? who is troubled by the need for soul atonement and appeasement, come to Jesus today. Come to Jesus today, and he will give you rest. He will give you rest. And he left us with only one commandment, to love our neighbor as ourselves. Religion is over. Thank God for this good news. God bless you. God keep you. As we strive, as we love our neighbor as ourselves, we are fulfilling the only existing mandate that supersedes every form of religious obligation. There is a confinement of all religion today by reason of the things, but those who know the truth, they are smiling and they are happy. All order and burden of religion has been laid aside by Jesus. If you accept him and just, just believe him, that's all, just believe him. Just believe him. Just believe him and he will come in and dwell in your heart and you'll become the temple of God. 
and you'll be, he will become your father like he is today. God bless you. I will see you in a minute and pray with you. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Somebody raise your hands. Come on. Our God is great. Hallelujah. We'll bless your name, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah.
Come on, sing it. Great are you, Lord Jesus. Come on. Come on. Don't go too far. Come on, just say it. Sing, great are you, Lord Jesus. I have no reason to doubt. I have no reason to doubt, Lord. What you say you will do. Exceedingly, abundantly, Jesus. so much good to be back god bless you i hope that you have had a blessed day with us today in this in this uh, streaming today i i hope you have had i know that a lot of questions will come out of this uh, subsequently but uh, i will be willing as i receive them i'll be willing to provide answers for them um so i i want to encourage you to live free and live unfettered by any shackle of any religion um, uh, the fact that we are not able to gather as a congregation at this time does not alter anything about our faith. Yes, it denies us of a larger gathering, but it does not have any impact on our faith. We are stronger at this time. The Lord himself will keep you. The Lord himself will bless you. The Lord himself will show you unusual favor and keep you in good health and safety. Father, I thank you for your children, all within the influence of my voice. I ask, oh God, that you keep them and strengthen them, oh God. Lord, for those who have lost their means of livelihood at this time, you will restore unto them in the name of Jesus. Lord, for those, oh God, who are still struggling, you will show them new possibilities, oh God, in their environment. Lord, new business visions in the name of Jesus. Lord, we will not lose any of our own this period in the name of Jesus. Lord, but for those who have suffered losses of loved ones, Lord, this season, I pray you console them. Keep them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Give them fortitude to go through the painful experience. And Lord, restore hope unto them in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you and God bless you. Come on, if you've, if you've been free from religion, I want you to put those hands wherever you are together for Jesus. Come on, everybody, let's praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. One, two. Come on, everybody. Come, let's praise the Lord for all the things he has done for us. Come on, everybody.
Jesus. 